Hey there, I'm Chris Hassel and we are here to mock it up with the NBA draft likely to take place a week before Thanksgiving. We have a trio of mock GMs ready to help us make these picks. Avery Johnson, Matt Babcock and Gary Parrish are with us. Um, the Timberwolves are going one, Warriors two, Hornets three. And, and there's really kind of, a, it's, it's not a great draft as far as talent at the top, um, but there is kind of a big three that we're looking at. Anthony Edwards, James Wiseman, LaMelo Ball, those three guys expected to all go in the top three. The Minnesota Timberwolves with the first pick in our mock draft, and Avery Johnson is our mock GM. Avery? With the first pick um, in the 2020 NBA draft, the Minnesota Timberwolves select Anthony Edwards out of the University of Georgia. Um, this is a kid that's, you know, 6'6", 220 pounds. Uh, he's got an unbelievable body, yes, a fr freak athlete. Uh, he's going to be a much improved uh, shooter from behind the three-point line. Uh, he fits in the backcourt with D'Angelo Russell. Uh, you could have taken James Wiseman here or LaMelo Ball, but I just think because it's Minnesota, I believe Anthony Edwards is the best fit for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Yeah, I, I agree with Avery, uh, you know, the talents there. I mean, I, I personally have Edwards as, as the highest talent in the draft. Uh, I, I question the fit in Minnesota, and one big reason there is they, they just traded for Malik Beasley, uh, who in, I believe in 14 games averaged over 20 points a game for them. And, uh, you know, he's going to be a restricted free agent. You take, you, you bring in Anthony Edwards, how do those guys coexist? Uh, I think the best fits in this draft for Minnesota would be Denny Avdia, uh, or Obi Toppin, uh, so I could see Minnesota being a being a team that dangles this pick to maybe move back to get one of those guys. Uh, but we'll see. I, you know, but I, I can't argue any team taking Anthony Edwards as, as he does have the most upside. You know, in some drafts, it, it's clear cut who has to be the number one pick. 2003, it's LeBron James. 2012, everybody takes Anthony Davis. Last year, everybody would have taken Zion Williamson number one. In this draft. Uh, it could be one of three guys, maybe even four, if you want to throw Obi Toppin into the mix. And uh, certainly Anthony Edwards is, is one of those guys. I would probably go in another direction, but this is a place where reasonable minds can totally disagree. And Anthony Edwards is a reasonable option at the top of this draft. Young wing, but under 30% from three-point range in his college career. Avery Johnson making the pick for Anthony Edwards, number one of the Timberwolves, saying that shooting will improve. The Golden State Warriors picking at number two, Gary Parrish, the mock GM. With the second pick in the 2020 NBA draft, the Golden State Warriors select LaMelo Ball. Obviously, this has been a young man we've known about for years. I first met him, saw him play when he was only 14 years old. And back then, he was an undersized shooter playing with uh, his brothers who were several years older than him, but he has developed really nicely. He's now a 6'7", 6'8", point guard, really creative passer, great in pick and roll situations, high basketball IQ. He's still got to get shot selection figured out, play a little more under control, and yes, he's got some possible issues on the defensive end of the court. Going to need to add weight, but simply put, in this draft, even if you include Anthony Edwards, I, I believe that if every prospect available reaches his potential, becomes the best version of his possible self, LaMelo Ball will be the best player from this draft. And so if he's available at number two, I, I think you have to take him. Now, it should be noted, um, there's no guarantee Golden State is going to execute this pick. All of the reporting has them trying to package it with something to perhaps get uh, a, a veteran piece who can help Steph Curry and Clay Thompson and Draymond Green win a championship as soon as next season. But if they do take the pick and LaMelo Ball's on the board, I think LaMelo Ball should be the player selected. You know, I, I can't disagree that LaMelo is worthy of being taken this high in the draft. Uh, I, I am concerned with the fit in Golden State. You know, I mean, they've had a lot of success with Steph, Clay, and Draymond in the roles that they've filled for years. Uh, you bring in a ball dominant guard uh, that also seems to be somewhat entitled uh, that that can really throw a wrench in, in the machine and uh, if i'm bob myers i'd be, I'd be careful of that because they're going to be in win now mode next year uh, you know and, and even though this this draft is a little bit down you're going to want to you know the second pick in the draft to play a major role 
you know, how does he how does he coexist with those guys? And uh, I question it, but uh, you know, Lamelo is is a super talented kid. We'll see if the Warriors hang tight at number two or uh, if they find an offer that they like to move down in the draft. LaMelo Ball going number two in our mock draft to the Golden State Warriors. The pick is in at number three, the Charlotte Hornets and Matt Babcock, our mock GM for Charlotte. Uh, with the third pick, I uh, have Michael Jordan and Mitch Kupchak taking uh, James Wiseman from Memphis. Uh, Wiseman, he's seven foot one, 240 pounds, a seven foot six wingspan. Uh, but don't don't get it wrong. He, he's not he's not someone that could put it, you know should be put in the category as a throwback big bodied five. This guy can really move. He's extremely athletic for a guy his size, and uh, I also think his skill level is underrated as well. And uh, you know there's a lot of talk about big men are easily replaceable. I don't think Wiseman is. I think he's in a category pr probably similar to like a DeAndre Aiden. Uh, you know, you, you can't replace a guy like that. This is going to be a guy at the very least is going to be a good starting center, if not very good. And in the way their team's built, they've got some nice young pieces. Uh, however, they have a hole at the five long term. Uh, Bismack Biombo uh, is set to be a free agent. Cody Zeller's only got one more year on his deal. Uh, I think Wiseman could be uh, be the guy for the future for them. I recruited James Wiseman when I was coaching in college, uh, when he was in ninth grade, living in Nashville, uh, Tennessee, before he moved to uh, uh, Memphis. And this kid has come a long way. Uh, I compare this kid to one of my old teammates, David Robinson, um, the Hall of Famer from the San Antonio Spurs. He's basically got the same body, uh, wingspan. You know, he can run like a guard, uh, very agile. I, I think one of the things that's underrated and undervalued in the NBA because we talk about offense and three-point shooting so much or bigs that can switch, bigs that can defend pick and rolls and also defend the rim. And uh, this kid, to go along with how he's going to grow from an offensive standpoint, I think he brings that much-needed defense uh, to help uh, uh, Charlotte on the defensive end. A comparison to the Admiral from Avery Johnson. That is high praise. James Wiseman, number three in our mock to the Memphis, excuse me, to the Charlotte Hornets. The Chicago Bulls sitting at number four overall. Avery Johnson, the mock GM, making the pick. Chicago Bulls uh, with the fourth pick select Obi Toppin from the Dayton Flyers. Uh, this is this would be one of the easiest picks if Obi Toppin is still on the board here at number four. This kid, I think, is the most ready of all of the players in, in the top five that there are not as many question marks because, you know, he's played four years in college, uh, often been reminded he only had maybe one offer uh, coming out of high school. Uh, but this kid is significantly improved. I had one of his games last year on CBS Sports Network. And the beauty of having a game is you have an opportunity to go and watch practice the day before. This kid has unbelievable practice habits. He's very coachable. Uh, Anthony Grant was uh, the, the coach of the year. Obi was the player of the year in college basketball. So I think this would be a perfect fit for a team in the Chicago Bulls who still don't have a coach and they have a lot of question marks and players that they have potentially missed on in previous drafts. I, I love this pick, and Avery is exactly right. Obi Toppin is ready to go. He is a, a plug-and-play prospect. I think the player in this draft who is best equipped to have a big impact, to post numbers as a rookie, I would make him the favorite to be Rookie of the Year, no, basically uh, no matter where he lands. I mean, you're talking about a 6'9", athletic forward, led the nation in dunks, so he's obviously great around the rim, great in transition, but also shot 39% from three-point range. So if you're looking for somebody who can maybe play some small ball five, he can do that. And certainly he can stretch the floor. He has shown the ability to knock down that shot reliably. I just really don't see any reason to think he's not going to be a, a very good NBA player for a long time. And the only drawback that you hear from NBA scouts is that He's only 22 years old. And I guess if you're trying to compare him to a teenager, you have to take that into consideration. But uh, I'd rather have a 22-year-old who's ready to play at, at this point in the draft uh, than uh, take a flyer on a 19-year-old that I'm not sure will ever be as good as Obi Toppin is right now. Yeah, grown man, ready to go, high floor. No question about it. The Bulls taking Obi Toppin number four in our mock. 
At number five, the Cleveland Cavaliers, Gary Parrish making the selection. With the fifth pick in the 2020 NBA draft, the Cleveland Cavaliers select Denny Avdia. He obviously is a 6'9 international prospect, uh, big enough and strong enough to, to play power forward, but also skilled enough to, to play on the wing. The shot is improving, and he really is an incredible playmaker. And I think at this point in the draft, Given the, uh, the the where the franchise is right now, Cleveland just needs to take best prospect available, guy with the highest upside, and I think Denny Avdia is that guy in this draft uh, at this point. Again, a little bit of a work in progress. I can acknowledge that, but um, when you watch him, and obviously we don't get a chance to see him in person as much as we see the college players because he didn't play college basketball, but when you watch the film, um, you see all of the stuff that makes him a consensus top 10 pick, and I think somebody who deserves to go in the top five. I agree with Gary. This this is the right pick. You know, uh, Denny's 6'9". Uh, he's got, you know, terrific versatility. He can play the three or the four. Uh, and just a well-rounded game. I mean, he, he can handle the ball, make plays for himself, make plays for his teammates. Terrific in transition. He, he showed some promise on the defensive end. Uh, I think his swing skill is outside shooting, uh, but he's shown some promise there. I, I don't think he's got broken mechanics, uh, and, and he seems to have uh, you know the, the personality to, to take on a big role. Uh, I expect big things for Abdi, and you know, as Cleveland you know continues to, to, to build that roster, I think he's the, the right piece you know moving forward. All right, Denny Avia. Number five, the Cleveland Cavaliers out of Israel. Up at number six in our mock draft, the Atlanta Hawks pick is in and Matt Babcock doing the honors. Uh, so with the sixth pick, I've got the Atlanta Hawks taking in Onyeka Kongwu from USC. Uh, I think the Hawks are in an interesting situation where they're they're young and they're developing, uh, but they have a lot of young assets and you know, they're starting to get some, some log jams in certain spots. Uh, and that's the case with, with this pick as well. They just trade for Clint Capella. Uh, but, you know, my feeling is that I think Clint Capella might be a little overrated as his stats were inflated in the Houston Rockets uh, offense. Uh, and Onyeka at six, I think he's just too good to pass up. I mean, we're seeing the success uh, Bam Adebayo's had in Miami. Uh, these guys are very similar. They're not exactly the same. I think Adebayo uh, is a better playmaker for a big, uh, with Okungwu being a better natural scorer. Um, I just recently learned that he, that he was a really good tennis player growing up, which I'm really not surprised because this kid's footwork for a kid at his stage uh, is really uncanny. Um, I think this is the right pick for, for Atlanta. Yeah, and with this pick, I can also see the Hawks potentially taking a kid like Isaac Okoro uh, out of Auburn. Um, I, I agree with Matt. There's a log jam at a lot of spots. But sometimes I think you need a specialist. And Okoro is a guy that could potentially be a lockdown defender. Um, he, he, he adds a ton of toughness to your team. I think Atlanta's a little bit soft, especially on the defensive end. Uh, when you're talking about you know, guys taking charges, getting 50-50 balls, uh, rebounding the basketball and able to push the basketball and take some pressure. Uh, you know, off, off Trey Young. So, uh, again, this this is a nice pick, but I could see Atlanta potentially taking Isaac Okoro with this pick. But Matt Babcock selects on Yeka Okongwu, a defensive menace for the Hawks at number six. The Detroit Pistons at number seven, and Avery Johnson making the pick. The D Detroit Pistons um, with the seven pick and takes uh, Tyrese Halliburton out of Iowa State. Uh, here's a kid that has, um, you know, triple-double potential. Uh, he needs to add a little weight to, to his frame. He only weighs about 175 pounds, but he's 6'5". Uh, you know, he can play on and off the ball. Uh, but when you talk about Detroit, you know, Derrick Rose is a little older. Uh, Reggie Jackson, who was playing with Detroit last year, you know, got bought out and now he's playing with the Clippers. So I, I could see here uh, Tyrese Halliburton is a kid that can play multiple positions, but because he can just pass, dribble, and shoot would be a nice addition to the Detroit Pistons. I, I like Halliburton a lot. You know, the casual college basketball fan probably didn't see him much because, you know, he didn't play at Kansas or Kentucky or North Carolina, Duke. He didn't play on a team that made some deep run into the NCAA tournament, but Basically, from the moment he stepped foot on campus, he was filling up box scores. He could score, he could get assists, he could rebound from his position. He's a guy who 
Um, a lot of the more analytics-driven uh, people in the NBA like a lot. And certainly, he, he looks like somebody who could um, be a, a, a combo guard, uh, even more of a point guard in the NBA for a long, long time. The ability to be special is, is undeniably there. All right, the Detroit Pistons taking Tyrese Halliburton, number seven in our mock. We're halfway through the lottery. Uh, with the eighth pick in the 2020 NBA draft, the New York Knicks select Isaac Okoro out of Auburn. Uh, this is a guy who uh, I think would provide that Knicks organization with something they need, which is people who are about the right stuff and built to win. Okoro, he's a winner, and he impacts uh, the game on both ends of the court, especially the defensive end of the court. This is a guy who um, could, could guard uh, on an island, uh, even point guards on islands. He could probably guard one through four in the NBA. He's got incredible defensive instincts, just seems to always know where to be. And when uh, you, you can just sort of uh, put him on the court and allow him to bother somebody, his floor, I think, is something like what Lou Dort is for Oklahoma City right now. If you watched him uh, in that playoff series against the Rockets, his job was to bother James Harden, and he was really good at it. And so I, I think the worst-case scenario is Okoro can fill that role for an NBA team. Uh, and then if he ever develops a jump shot, uh, look out. Then he's got a chance to, to really be something nice. But uh, again, the floor is pretty high. And everything I know about Okoro is high character, high work, e great work ethic, um, a humble attitude. He just checks a lot of boxes that is going to uh, play a nice role at worst for a good NBA franchise. You know, I'm probably going to echo Gary here a little bit, but, you know, Okoro, you know, he's built like an NFL linebacker, and he just defends everybody. And this is a young guy that's, you know, you, you know is going to develop, you know, doing background on him, high character kid, worker. Uh, and so a guy, you know, that, that has a chance to be an elite defender, guard one through four, uh, you know, could be special. Offensively, I think his game is, is, uh, is pretty simple. I mean, he's a straight line driver. He does have a good feel for the game and, and, and is a pretty good passer. Uh, outside shooting is a little bit of a concern. Uh, you know, if he's able to get to that point where he's, you know, reliable enough, uh, this guy could be a big time guy. All right, Isaac Okoro, number eight to the New York Knicks, who were hoping to be picking a, a lot higher than that. The lottery didn't exactly work out for them again this season. All right, the pick is in at number nine, the Washington Wizards and Matt Babcock. Yeah, with the ninth pick, I have the Wizards and uh, Tommy Shepard taking Devin Vassell from, from Florida State. Um, I think the Wizards are an interesting spot. You know, they've got so much money tied up with John Wall and Bradley Beal. Uh, Beal, they could trade him if they'd like. Doesn't sound like they're they're looking to do that yet. Uh, Wall, I think they're stuck with that contract. And if you're paying a guy close to 40 million a year, you know, I think you uh, I think you need to play him. So even though I think there's some good point guards on the board here, I uh, went with the guy that could coexist with those two players. Uh, Vassell, you know, he's, he's 6'6", 180 pounds. He's got a really long wingspan. Uh, and there's nothing flashy about his game. Uh, but he's very reliable offensively. You know, he's a shot maker with range, good in the mid range. He can finish at the hole using using his length. Then he's got some counter moves around the basket in the mid range with po you know post up uh, turnarounds and fadeaways. Uh, but maybe most importantly, defensively, he really uses his length, uh, his instincts, and his defensive hands to, to to guard a bunch of different players and, and make some stuff happen. So I, I think it's somewhat of a safe pick uh, in a guy that you know, kind of give you some lineup flexibility moving forward and. Uh, I think this would be a solid pick for the Wizards. Wizards going with Devin Vassell out of Florida State at number nine. We have hit number 10 in our mock draft. The Phoenix Suns, who, who made waves in the bubble, won every game, just missed the postseason. Avery Johnson picking for the Suns. With the 10th pick, the Phoenix Suns select Kyra Lewis out of the University of Alabama. And I hope Gary and Matt... They don't call me a homer here, but I, I think this kid is, is a lottery pick. Uh, he's moved up significantly, in my opinion, in the draft. Uh, the Phoenix Suns, I had an opportunity to go and watch them in training camp and in preseason. I'm really good friends with Monty Williams. We played together uh, uh, with the Spurs, so I know their organization, James Jones, their GM. And I just think uh, Ricky Rubio's getting a little bit long in the two I think he's on the back nine of his career so to start preparing for that transition and to give Devin Booker another guy that can make plays uh, that has you know deep three-point range sure he's 19 years old 
He's got to get a little bit stronger, but he played, you know, 32 minutes a game in his freshman year. Uh, he went up to 38 minutes a game uh, and improved in his sophomore season. So I could see this kid fitting in with uh, Kelly Oubre, uh, uh, Devin Booker uh, at the guard position. And, and I think this would be a surprise pick for the Suns, but one that I would make. Uh, I tell you, if I were an NBA general manager watching this, I would really be interested in what Avery said there because who knows Kyra Lewis better than Avery Johnson? He recruited him. He coached him. He worked with him every day. And if Avery is willing to say that he thinks the young man should be picked into the top 10, which is higher than most analysts believe he should go, that speaks volumes to me because Avery at this point doesn't owe Kyra Lewis anything. He doesn't have to say what he just said. He said it because he believes it. And if I've got a former NBA coach of the year who has worked very closely with this point guard prospect and saying, don't let him go out outside the top 10, that registers with me. All right, Kyra Lewis, the point guard out of Alabama, number 10 to the Phoenix Suns. We're seeing the San Antonio Spurs in the lottery. They are drafting number 11. And somewhat amazingly, we did not give this pick to Mr. Spur, Avery Johnson, Mr. San Antonio. I've seen how that city treats him on the road. They love him. Uh, Gary Parrish is picking for San Antonio. Gary? With the 11th pick in the 2020 NBA draft, the San Antonio Spurs select Killian Hayes. I mean, this is a franchise that had some good history with uh, point guards who were raised in France, so why not try it again? But even if you take that and set it aside, this is a young man who is still very young, just 19 years old, but really, really knows how to play. Whether you watch film of him or talk to people who have seen him in person, they all say the same things. High basketball IQ and really understands how to get where he wants to get on a basketball court, how to run a team. Now, basically, if you're going to take him as high as I'm willing to take him, you've got to be a believer that he's going to be able to improve his jump shot because he shot below 30% from three-point range this past season. Um, simply put, you can't do that anymore and play the position that he wants to play. And so he's got to get the jump shot figured out. And if he does, then there's star potential there. If he doesn't, you should not touch him with the 11th pick in the draft. But I'm a believer. I think he'll get that to at least an adequate place. And if he becomes somebody who you have to guard and respect on the perimeter, all the other stuff, it's mostly already there. Totally agree with Gary with this pick. Uh, the Spurs have had a ton of success in the past, you know, drafting foreign players, especially, you know, late in the first round. Now, they've, they're they they're in a place where they normally are not in, in the lottery, but they've had a lot of success, you know, drafting Tony Parker, obviously Manu Ginobili, two future Hall of Famers. And uh, Hayes is a guy that fits the profile of the Spurs. High basketball IQ, knowing how to play on and off the ball, but they really love guys that can pass the basketball and make your, their teammates better. So this wouldn't be a surprise. Totally agree with Gary here. And especially Coach Popovich is running it back another year as a coach before he takes on uh, the national team duties next uh, summer in the Summer Olympics in Japan. So this would be uh, in a, pick, a pick that would definitely not surprise me. Going with an international player, Killian Hayes, out of France at number 11. The Sacramento Kings at number 12. Matt Babcock making the pick. Yeah, so I've uh, the Sacramento Kings taken uh, Patrick Williams from Florida State. Uh, you know, the Kings had just recently parted ways with a uh, longtime uh, boss, Vladi Divac. So we'll see who actually will be uh, making this pick and what direction they're going in. Uh, but I think they should go with Patrick. He, you know, he's a high upside guy. Uh, sort of reminds me of former NBA players Tim Thomas and, and, and now uh, Marvin Williams, who just retired. Uh, and what's interesting with those two guys is when they came in the, to the league, they were considered hybrid forwards. Uh, I personally see Patrick Williams more as a small ball four, face up four. Uh, you know, he's got good size, athleticism, can shoot the ball from outside, puts it on the floor, create it in the mid range, uh, and he's switchable on defense. And so he fits how teams are liking to play and in utilizing their four spot. Uh, I don't think he's necessarily ready to contribute at a high level next year. Uh, but in the next two or three years, I wouldn't be surprised if he's one of the better players uh, coming out of this draft. Yeah, it could be a, a, a good good boom guy to get right in the teens here in this position. The Kings taking Patrick Williams, number 12 overall. New Orleans Pelicans 
just missed the playoffs. They're picking at number 13 overall in our mock draft. Avery? With the 13th pick, the New Orleans Pelicans select Aaron Neesmith from the Vanderbilt Commodores. Um, this is a kid that is a sharp shooter. Think about this. This kid shoots 50% from the field, 50% from the three-point line, and 80% from the free throw line. This kid has unbelievable range. Uh, he played for one of my former players, Jerry Stackhouse, last year. Uh, this kid can come off screens. Uh, he can play it in pick and rolls. Uh, he can play multiple positions. He can play the two, he can play the three, play the small four. And when you're talking about the New Orleans Pelicans, what does Zion Williamson need surrounding him? He needs space. So that means he needs guys that can flat out knock down the three point shot to go along with guys like JJ Reddick. Um, so I, this would be a really solid pick for the New Orleans Pelicans. Man, look at that note. Made seven plus threes in a game four different times at Vanderbilt. It is Aaron Nesmith, number 13 to the Pelicans. Rounding out the lottery, the Celtics with the first of three first round picks. Gary Parrish. With the 14th pick in the 2020 NBA draft, the Boston Celtics select Sadiq Bey out of Villanova. This is obviously a pick they get from the Memphis Grizzlies because um, an Eastern Conference Finals team isn't supposed to be picking in the lottery. But here we are. And obviously the Celtics, at least in my mind, just need to take best player available. They're, they're pretty much loaded at every position. And uh, Sadiq Bey, at this point in the draft, is, I believe, best prospect available. I've got him going in my top ten, so to get him at the back of the lottery is, is a pretty good situation. He's a 6'8", combo forward, ideal wing for the modern NBA, and a guy who shot 45% from three-point range this past season at Villanova, plays on both ends of the court, is effective on both ends of the court, and comes from a program that has been playing modern basketball as well as anybody in recent years, that being that Villanova program led by future Hall of Famer Jay Wright. So I'm a big Sadiq Bey fan. I know that unless you watch a lot of Big East basketball, you might not have seen him a lot because this is not a guy who was a McDonald's All-American coming out of high school, wasn't even a top 100 prospect coming out of high school. But very quickly at Villanova, he looked the part, and I can see him playing in the NBA at a high level for a really long time. Sadiq Bey to the Celtics at number 14, the final lottery pick. Boston has picks 26 and 30 as well later on in this first round. The Orlando Magic made the playoffs in the Orlando bubble. They are at number 15. Matt Babcock making the selection. Yeah, I have the Magic going with R.J. Hampton, who played uh, for the New Zealand Breakers this year. Uh, the way I see it is, you know, I, I understand that uh, Markel Fultz has really turned things up, you know, after his sort of nightmarish couple, first couple years. Uh, I'm not ready to go all in on him. And uh, with R.J., he's an upside guy. He, he's absolutely not ready. Uh, but this guy's got good size for a combo guard. Uh, quick twitch athlete that's got some star potential and uh, I mean if things were to click for him I think we could be looking at a more athletic Jordan Clarkson type player uh, and I think it, you know that's what that's what Orlando needs and so at 15 I think it's worth sort of swinging for the fences on a guy like RJ that's not a sure thing uh, but does have a significant amount of upside all right RJ Hampton number 15 to the Orlando Magic 19 years old not a great season in New Zealand but a lot of upside as Matt said Portland Trailblazers picking at number 16, Avery Johnson making the selection. With the 16 pick, the Portland Trailblazers select Cole Anthony uh, out of the University of North Carolina. Um, this is a pick that's based on just a high usage rate for Damian Lillard, and they just need to get some more depth at the point guard position. Lillard has to do so much the night in and night out for Portland to be successful. If it wasn't for uh, the bubble situation and the NBA getting postponed this year because of COVID, Portland probably wasn't going to make the playoffs. Obviously, we know that the bubble really helped them uh, kick it back in the gear, especially when you had a team like Phoenix go 8-0 and, and they didn't make the playoffs. So I think this is about, you know, Damian Lillard trying to provide some depth behind him or if there's some sort of blockbuster trade, if Portland thinks their window is closing to be a potential championship caliber team. Cole Anthony, number 16 to the Portland Trailblazers. 
At number 17, the Minnesota Timberwolves picking again. They had the first overall pick, and in our mock, they took Anthony Edwards, number one overall. Gary Parrish making the pick at 17. With the 17th pick in the 2020 NBA draft, the Minnesota Timberwolves select Precious Achua from the University of Memphis. Uh, based on where I live, I got to see Precious a lot this past season, and he was terrific. One of the most productive freshmen in the entire country, the only freshman to average a double-double. You know, he came to Memphis to play the four beside James Wiseman. That was the plan, but then Wiseman quit the team the week before Christmas, at which point Penny Hardaway really had no choice but to play Precious in the middle. Precious didn't want to play there, but he was effective there. Again, uh, did everything he was asked to do by his coaches. He's somebody who has an incredibly high motor, really gets after it, and he's a great athlete who can guard in space. So uh, I think the worst case scenario is he's somebody who brings energy off the bench and, and guards in space, which is obviously valuable in the NBA right now. And the best case scenario, if he gets his skill set improved, and gets the shot selection under control and the shot improved, well, then you got somebody who checks all of the other physical boxes. The natural tools are there. He's just got to add some skill, and if he adds some skill, you're getting a real steal at this point in the draft. All right, so the Timberwolves taking Precious Achua, number 17 overall, via the Brooklyn Nets, who originally owned this pick. The Timberwolves uh, teaming Precious Achua with Anthony Edwards in this mock draft. At number 18, the Dallas Mavericks and Matt Babcock making this selection. You've already got what some people are calling the best player in the NBA, Luka Doncic. Yeah, of course, with Luka, I mean, everything you do needs to be geared around him. And so with the Mavericks, I have them taking Isaiah Stewart uh, from Washington. Uh, and the way I see Isaiah Stewart, he kind of in the mold of like a Montrez Harrell, like an undersized five. Not quite as athletic as Harrell, but uh, a better shooter. Um, you know, and I had a chance to talk to him a couple weeks ago. Ultimate character kid. Uh, I think he's a guy that would run through a brick wall if needed, and, and really he's strong enough to do it. I think he's going to be able to step in and provide a ton of, of uh, you know, physicality uh, and, and toughness and uh, just a, a guy that I have a high confidence level that's going to succeed. And, uh, you know, with the Mavericks roster, outside of, of Luka and Porzingis, I'm not sure how many more of those guys on that roster now will be there for, you know, for much longer. And so Stewart's a guy you can pencil him in next to Porzingis, and they kind of balance each other out uh, pretty good. So at this stage in the draft, uh, I think this would be a good pick. Hard nose, throwback, big man. Isaiah Stewart out of Washington is the pick at number 18 for the Dallas Mavericks. Brooklyn Nets going to have a loaded roster next season with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving presumably healthy. They are picking at number 19. Avery Johnson making the selection. The 19th pick, the Brooklyn Nets select Tyreek Maxey out of the University of Kentucky. Uh, this is a kid that if he's still on the board after the Mavericks pick uh, is going to be joy and maybe a little bit of sadness. He'll be happy because this kid is from Dallas, uh, played his high school ball in the Dallas area, played for an AAU program, uh, Drive Nation uh, with Jermaine O'Neal, who played for a long time in the NBA. This kid can really flat out shoot the ball. He reminds me of a kid that I coach that's now an assistant at the University of Arizona, Jason Terry. You know, he's a knockdown three-point shooter. Uh, he, he can just make plays. Uh, he's a much improved defensive player, but he just gives Brooklyn another ball handler, protection behind Kyrie Irving, especially with his injury history, but just has solid size. Uh, he's gonna be playing for another former uh, teammate of mine, Steve Nash, who's the new uh, head coach for the Brooklyn Nets. So I think this would be a solid pick for the for the Brooklyn Nets. Brooklyn Nets taking Tyrese Maxey, number 19 overall. At number 20, the Miami Heat, a surprisingly great team in the bubble playoffs. Gary Parrish making the pick. With the 20th pick in the 2020 NBA draft, the Miami Heat select Teo Maladon, the international prospect, a point guard from France. Uh, listen, Gordon Dragic is a 34-year-old unrestricted free agent, so point guard is a position of need for Miami. And at this point, I think Maladon is just the best point guard prospect available. He's a, a lanky guard, 6'4", 6'5", but he is excellent in pick and roll situations. Just always seems to know when you watch film uh, where to, to get the ball. Like, really seems under control at, at, at all times. And so, 
when you can get a, a, a young, again, just 19 years old, playmaker at this point in the draft, uh, he's somebody who could end up being a top 10 player in the draft that you get you know, at number 20 if you were to take him here, and that's obviously great value. At this point, the Heat are just um, trying to find somebody who can help them um, be an impactful player, whether that's off the bench or maybe the point guard of the future. And again, with Dragic being an unrestricted free agent and 34 years old, the Heat could use this uh, pick to maybe draft their point guard of the future. And the Heat taking Teo Maladin, number 20 overall. Our mock continues at the number 21 selection. The Philadelphia 76ers have this pick via OKC. Matt Babcock making the selection. Yeah, the Philadelphia 76ers going with Malachi Flynn from San Diego State. Uh, you know, I'll acknowledge that this, this is on his high side of, of his market value. Uh, you know, the Phillies in, uh, in transition right now after they parted ways with Brett Brown, so we'll see who they hire. Uh, but, you know, the second part of the year, they took Ben Simmons off of, of being the primary ball handler point guard, and he had a lot of success. And so I think they need, need to address uh, their backcourt. Right now, they've only got Shake Milton that's capable of playing point guard. Uh, Malachi Flynn is a proven winner. I mean, after transferring from Washington State, he led San Diego State to a 30 and 2 record and, and really, really ran the show. He was the floor general. He's just a tough kid that, you know, doing some background on him, uh, loves, eats, sleeps basketball. And so I think this kid's going to succeed. And, uh, you know, a few years ago, every team in the league passed on Fred Van Vliet, and he's about to cash in on, you know, I would assume making probably 20 plus million per year. Uh, Malachi Flynn and, and Van Vliet have a lot of similarities. And so uh, I think this would be a nice addition for Philly. Mountain West Player of the Year, Mountain West Defensive Player of the Year, Malachi Flynn, number 21 overall to the 76ers. At number 22, the Denver Nuggets via the Houston Rockets, and Avery Johnson making this selection for Denver. With the 22nd pick, the Denver Nuggets select Cassius Winston, Michigan State uh, University. Um, a lot of times in the NBA, uh, people always talk about they need instant offense off the bench. Uh, it, Vinny Microwave Johnson comes to mind with the old Detroit Pistons. But sometimes you just need instant leadership and you need an instant winner. And this kid, all he's done is his entire career, he's just been a winner. You know, he's been the Big Ten player of the year. I call him Mr. Big Ten. This kid just knows how to play. He's a coach on the floor. Uh, when you look at guys like Jamal Murray and Gary Harris, who's played 40 and 41 minutes in game six versus the Clippers, who knows what's going to happen in game seven. You just need quality depth. And this is a kid that, that can play multiple positions. But uh, you, and when you're a team as close as the Denver Nuggets are to winning the championship, you got to have players that you can count on and very rarely do we see a lot of these college players make it to their senior year. So um, just really impressed with Cassius. Been watching him for a long time. And, and I just think this would be a, a, a solid fit for the Nuggets. Big Ten fans are happy he's finally out of the conference and headed to the NBA. Cassius Winston, number 22 overall in our mock to the Nuggets. All right, we're on to our number 23 selection. Gary Parrish picking for the Utah Jazz. With the 23rd pick in the 2020 NBA draft, the Utah Jazz select Jaden McDaniels out of Washington. And to be clear, transparent, this is nothing more than a flyer pick on an interesting prospect because there wasn't much of anything that we saw from Jaden McDaniels in his one year in the Pac-12 that suggests he is one of the top 25 players in this draft. He was by far the most disappointing player on one of the most disappointing teams in the country. Even butted heads with his coach, Mike Hopkins, got benched for a short period of time. But... Uh, don't ever forget, it was less than a year ago where basically everybody had this young man projected as a top 10 pick in the 2020 NBA draft. So the talent and natural ability is there. And so what you're hoping is that it was just a bad fit for whatever reason at Washington and a lesson learned for an interesting prospect because it was just two years ago when the Denver Nuggets decided where they were picking, they might as well take a flyer on a young man named Michael Porter Jr., who was a top five talent in that draft, but slipped for medical reasons. Um, that seems like a gamble that has paid off. Perhaps this could be the Utah Jazz's version of that. Take a gamble on a guy who less than a year ago, everybody thought was a top 10 pick. You get him at number 23. And the good news is, Jaden, you're going to get an extra foul when you get to the NBA level. No, you had those eight disqualifications <laughs> yes. in college. With the five fouls, you get six in the NBA. 
This pick was originally Indiana's. It's now Milwaukee's number 24 overall. Matt Babcock. Yeah, with the 24th pick, I have the Milwaukee Bucks taking Elijah Hughes from Syracuse. Uh, Hughes took a, a team at Syracuse that I, I really felt did not have much talent, and, and they had a pretty good year. And it depended on him to do essentially everything. He, he created off the dribble, he can shoot with really deep range, he can finish at the rim with powerful dunks. Uh, you know, evaluate him on the defensive end can be challenging at, at Syracuse as they, they play zone. Uh, but I do, you know, looking at his physical tools and doing some homework, uh, learning about his character and personality, I think he's a guy that's going to be able to d develop into a pretty good defender as well. Uh, and, and within Milwaukee, uh, you know, they need to strike while the iron's hot. Hopefully Giannis is going to be there for a long time for, for them. Um, you know, and, and Kyle Korver, Wesley Matthews Jr. are getting older. Uh, I'm not sure they're going to be able to keep Pat Connaughton. I think Elijah Hughes is a guy they can plug in and play him in, in their rotation next year at the two and the three uh, and give him somebody else that on their team that can create some create some offense. So I think this would be a good pick for, for the Milwaukee Bucks uh, as he could contribute next year. Elijah Hughes to Milwaukee at number 24. Oklahoma City is picking at number 25. This pick is from the Denver Nuggets. Avery? With the 25th pick, the Oklahoma City Thunder select Jameis Ramsey out of Texas Tech. This kid uh, is a kid that I think really underachieved uh, this year. You know, even though he averaged 15 points a game, um, he, he struggled, uh, especially at the end of the season. Uh, he only scored six points in a game against Kansas at the end of the season, whereas he scored 26 points against Kansas in the early season, early February game. Uh, so this he has a really good body, a pretty good athlete. Uh, we're not sure what's going to happen with Oklahoma City with Chris Paul, whether he's going to return next year or if they're going to go to a total youth movement with the new coach. So this will give them some insurance, but uh, Ramsey's definitely going to have to improve on both ends of the floor, improve his focus, and not get lost as much on defense. All right, we are 25 picks deep in our 2020 mock draft. The Boston Celtics took Sadiq Bay earlier in the draft. This is their sandwich pick. They're up here at 26. They also have the last pick in the first round, the 30th pick. Uh, Gary Parrish making this pick at 26. Uh, with the 26th pick in the 2020 NBA draft, the Boston Celtics select Jalen Smith out of Maryland. Uh, Daniel Tice is the Boston Celtics starting center. So, you know, trying to find a possible upgrade there um, isn't the worst idea. And Jalen Smith has got the uh, ability to be a possible upgrade in time. This is a young man who improved tremendously from his freshman to his sophomore season. Like points went up, rebounds went up, blocks went up, the uh, shooting percentages went up. He shot 37% from three point range this past season, 75% from the free throw line. So he can uh, rim protect for you, but also be a, a, a guy who could reasonably uh, be considered a three point shooting. Uh, space creator at either the four or the five, somebody who opens up driving lanes for Kimba Walker and Jason Tatum. So if you're the Boston Celtics, again, um, you are really just adding to a really nice roster at this point, uh, but adding somebody uh, like Jalen Smith makes a lot of sense to me. Jalen Smith, Sadiq Bay, now to the Boston Celtics in our mock draft. They have one more pick coming up at number 30. The New York Knicks took Isaac Okoro in the top 10. They now have the 27th overall pick from the Clippers. Matt? Yeah, with the 27th pick, uh, the New York Knicks take Zeke Naji uh, from Arizona. Um, you know, my, my alma mater, so bear, bear down. Uh, but Zeke's a guy, he's 6'11", 240. Uh, you know, just a really hardworking uh, kid that holds himself accountable. Uh, one interesting part of his game that I learned about him when I watched him in high school uh, is he's capable of shooting the ball from outside. He wasn't asked to do that at Arizona, uh, but he's a guy I think is going to be able to evolve uh, and be an effective guy at the four or the five. And uh, coincidentally, kind of reminds me of a, a player the Knicks currently have on their roster, Bobby Portis, uh, who's you know been a, a, a solid player. Uh, the thing about it is Portis is uh, has a team option. He's making 15 million a year. I think you could you could draft a guy like Zeke Naji, plug him into that spot where he's on a rookie deal. Uh, he's significantly younger, uh, so this would be a, a good pick for them, giving them some lineup flexibility, providing minutes at the four and the five, and just getting a high character kid that will help you kind of build your culture there in New York. All right, Zeke Naji, number 27 overall to the New York Knicks. At number 28, the Los Angeles Lakers, Avery Johnson make the pick. 
with the 28th pick, the Los Angeles Lakers select Vernon Carey out of Duke. Uh, this kid is a 6'10 lefty. Um, I think he'll fit well with the Lakers. His motor was inconsistent last year with Duke, so I think, you know, having an opportunity to work with LeBron James and, and learning how to be a pro on a night in and night out basis will help him. A lot of NBA mock drafts have uh, Vernon Carey going in the second round, but I think he can sneak here in the late in the first round here to the Lakers, especially when the Lakers want to downsize and not play a traditional center. Uh, Vernon is a kid that can that can play some small center, uh, especially against some of those teams that love the downsize and also be a threat in the post where he's definitely got to improve his game. Uh, he'll be a much improved shooter uh, from the mid range. But this I think this would be a nice fit for the Los Angeles Lakers if he's available. He was a consensus top five high school player uh, going into college last season. Vernon Carey, the center from Duke, going number 28 to the Lakers in our mock. The 29th pick is in the Toronto Raptors. Gary Parrish making his final pick of the first round. With the 29th pick in the 2020 NBA draft, the Toronto Raptors select Xavier Tillman from Michigan State University. Serge Ibaka and Marc Gasol are both aging and unrestricted free agents. So Toronto could use some front court help. And when I say help, I mean somebody who can help immediately. And, Serge, uh, and, and Xavier Tillman is that guy. He turns 22 in January, so he's older. And he's already physically mature, 6'8". 245, okay. so he's got the body to step in and play in the NBA uh, immediately. Uh, incredible rebounder, high character guy. Uh, you talk to the people at Michigan State, they have nothing but good things to say about him. So if you're the Raptors trying to possibly replace Mark Gasol and or Serge Ibaka, Xavier Tillman is a good place to turn. Okay, Xavier Tillman, number 29 to the Toronto Raptors. One more pick. And at number 30 to round out the first round, the Boston Celtics, it seems like they always have at least two or three picks in the first round. This is their third and final pick. Matt Babcock making the selection. Uh, with the 30th pick, I have the Boston Celtics taking Alexei Pokusevsky uh, from Greek powerhouse Olympiakos. Uh, so Boston's an interesting situation, like you mentioned. Danny Ainge is a good, does a good job of uh, you know, collecting assets, and so he always has a lot of picks. Uh, this, this year uh, is no different. Uh, so Pokusevsky's a guy, I mean, especially at 30, um, you know, has a ton of upside. He's seven feet tall. He's only 200 pounds, but he's extremely skilled. He's sort of in the Christos Porzingis mold. Uh, I, I do think he's probably at least a couple years away of contributing on the NBA level, just just due to his physical limitations. Uh, but you know, getting an upside guy that can give you some flexibility of, hey, maybe we, we stash this guy for a couple years. Uh, you know, since we have so many picks and, and, and have a you know have, have a roster filled with a lot of a lot of players under contract. Uh, he's a you know high upside pick that, that could be a player in the next few years that can make Danny Ainge look, look like a, even more of a genius than he already is. All right, that wraps up our first round mock here on CBS Sports HQ. Okay, I'm Chris Hassel back with our uh, panel of mock general managers, Avery Johnson, Matt Babcock, and Gary Parrish. Let's take a look at, at how the top 10 went down in our mock. There were no trades. We just went in order of the lottery, which is in place. Minnesota taking Anthony Edwards, number one overall. There's kind of a big three at the top, and then question marks after that. Maybe Obi Toppin makes it a big four. It, it, the questions really start at five and below. Avery, what stood out to you in the top ten? Wow, I, I would say probably LaMelo Ball uh, going second to the Golden State Warriors. Uh, I, I probably would select James Wiseman with that pick because I'm thinking about fit. You know, you already have Steph Curry, uh, Clay Thompson, uh, Draymond Green handles the ball uh, quite a bit. So I'm thinking, you know, th the Warriors would need some frontline help, a guy that can defend the basket, you know, that can get you some easy baskets in the paint. Uh, so I, I think that would be a little bit surprising, even though I know LaMelo Ball has a huge upside. But for me, I would probably take James Wiseman with the second pick. I, uh, as we talked through this, really started to, to like the idea of Isaac Okoro at eight to the New York Knicks, if he's available, of course. That Knicks organization has been 
uh, just a bad place for a variety of reasons for a long, long time. Uh, now they, they're being run by new people and they have to change the culture. And I Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.